Hey, GED students. Um, I received an email with a question about the distributive property. And just reading the email made me realize that it wasn't really the distributive property my student was struggling with. It was the difference between what we do when we add and subtract in algebra versus what we do when we multiply in algebra. So adding and subtracting and multiplication are different operations. And so they're going to behave differently, whether I'm looking at decimals or fractions or um, you know, plain old whole numbers or word problems or um, it holds true in algebra as well. Addition and subtraction behave differently than multiplication and division. So let's take it back to the definition here. I just would have you remember uh, one cool little fact, actually maybe two cool little facts uh, that we can express Repeated addition as multiplication. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Even repeated subtraction could be expressed as multiplication. Uh, for example, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. I call this repeated addition because I'm adding up the same number over and over again. So uh, another way to think of that, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, plus five uh, is the number 5 uh, 6 times. And so we could write that shortly as 5 times 6. Now the same is true when we get to algebra. x plus x plus x plus x plus x plus x, well, that's the number x adding 6 times, or 6 times x, and we simply write that as 6x, okay? So that's one important thing. Next important thing that you remember is it's not only repeated addition that behaves that way, we also uh, have a way to rewrite repeated multiplication, okay? We can express repeated multiplication using what are known as exponents, so similar idea uh, but now instead of the it being the addition that's repeating, it's the exponents. So not 5 plus 5 plus 5, but 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. This is a huge number. Like 5 times 5 is already 25. Times it by 5 again, I'm at 125. You know, another 5 gives me 625, and we've run out of the 5s I can do in my head, and I still have a couple more to multiply. This is a huge number if I were to multiply it out, but I could also write it using exponents, the number 5 raised to the 6th power. So similarly, when you have repeated multiplication with x's, x's multiplying against each other, you use exponents. This is x to the 6th power, or 6 x's not adding, multiplying. Six X's multiplying. All right, let's take that information and use it to answer her question. So the question was about this problem, and I'm going to write it over here on the multiplication side because it's a distribution problem. Distribution uh, is a term that we use when we're talking about multiplication. It describes the action of multiplication. Uh, just the idea that multiplication passes out to every term in the parentheses. So when I look at this, what does this say? This says take 3x and multiply it by all the numbers in the parentheses. See how the 3x is shoved up against the parentheses? It's multiplying by everything in there. And I can see, if we look inside this parentheses, I have two terms. I have an x and a minus 7 or negative 7. Um, <clears throat> when I'm thinking of this as an addition problem, I read it as x minus 7, addition, subtraction. But when I'm thinking about multiplication, I read it as negative 7. They mean the same thing, okay? So um, now, uh, when I go to pass this out, I'm multiplying. We know multiplication passes out over parentheses. So I actually see 2x in multiplication. First, the 3x. The entire 3x is going to multiply with the first term, x. And then the 3x is going to multiply by the second term. And when I multiply that, I think of it as negative 7. So 3x times negative 7. So let's do uh, 3x times x first. So what is 3x times x? Well, and uh, this is just what's going on in my head. You don't have to write this down, guys. Well, let's think about it. We have the number 3. 
there's just one number, so it's still going to be in part of this. But now I have two x's multiplying. How do we talk about repeated multiplication? Well, we just said we use exponents. So that's why we'll say x squared or x to the second power. I'm saying a 3 and 2 x's multiplying. That's what that says right there. All shoved together, a 3 and 2 x's all multiplying. Okay, so now I did the first term. So now let's think about if we did 3x times negative 7. You had this uh, question that you asked when you sent me the email, Nicole, why am I multiplying when they're not like terms? Yeah, that's you mixing up the rules for adding and subtracting with multiplying and dividing. It's only addition and subtraction that's strict. It's only with adding and subtracting where we care about like terms. In fact, the concept of um, adding and subtracting in algebra is often called combining like terms. Since the beginning of math, we've always been able, or I should say we've only ever been able to add and subtract the same kinds of things, like oranges with oranges or apples with apples. Even when we do our traditional uh, addition algorithm, you see us adding the same kinds of things. We had three ones with five ones and we get eight ones. We had two tens with three tens and we get five tens. We had 100 with no hundreds and we get 100. Okay, so we add the same kinds of things to get the same kinds of things. And that's also true in algebra. You know, if I have two x's and three x's and I add them, yeah, I'm going to have five x's. Just like when I added two tens and three tens, I had five tens. Okay, but I'm not adding over here, I'm multiplying. Is it possible to take 3x seven times? It sure is. 3x. 3x, 3x, they don't have to be the same to do multiplication. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I had 3x uh, 7 times, then you would see I'd get 3x, 6x, 9x, 12x, 15x, 18x, 21x. In this case, it's really a negative 7, so it would be negative 21x's. Uh, but we could see we could just multiply that through, you know, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Stick an x on its backside because x is multiplying with it too. And I am done. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.